looks like it's 6.30. All righty. And thank you. So, um, so we have some new members. So we have quorum, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. All right. Do we see any adjustments to the agenda? Or need any adjustments to the agenda? The agenda. Um, I do so want to make sure that we know um, that I'm sure you all got Vicki's email today, but Vicki is resigning from the Arts Commission. We got her for a, a brief time back. Um, I feel lucky to have had her back on, but just send your prayers up for her husband's health, and I know that wasn't an easy decision. So um, I guess twofold. Um, send good wishes towards Vicki, and I did ask if there was anything that we could do materially to help if they need meals or anything like that or some way to support that situation um, and also know that we can still use a few more cultural arts commissioners if you know someone who's been thinking about it and been on the fence um, this would be a, a good time so that's I don't know if that's an agenda item but just wanted to speak to Vicky's absence tonight gotcha Anybody have anything else to add? Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from last week. Or last week, wow, last month. 8-17. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I, saw, thing I was saw was Bernie was not here as the facilitator. And everything else to me looked... Pretty straightforward as it happened. Does anybody see any changes to the minutes from last month? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve last month's minutes? I will move to approve last month's minutes. Can I get a second? Anyone? Jeff's going to second by <laughs> wave. All right. Pop back over to the agenda. All right. All in I favor. Guess all in favor. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Passing that. All right. Any opposed? Nope. All right. So now we're moving on to Arts Commission leadership vote for a new chair. And who is the R? I can't see. I, I heard we're supposed to have two new members and I can only see one. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, I'm Rachel Hay and I oh. don't know why. Is it a black box for you? Yeah, we can't yeah. see you. I don't know why. I It says like camera allowed and all that. So I don't know, but I was wondering about that too. Um, Can you see the little icon? If you scroll your cursor down a little bit, you should see a video icon and you can click on your camera. So like now it's the line through the camera. Is that on? No, that's off. So click it again. Which is how it, it was originally. Okay. Are you on a Are you on a phone or a computer or tablet? A computer. Um, last time I used Teams, I had to be on my phone though. I don't know. I may just switch over to my phone for now. I wonder if you don't have a camera on your computer. I mean, I do though because this is like the computer I use all the time for yeah. Zoom, Google Meet. I feel like I know them all, so like for some reason, <laughs> this one is not not going so maybe it's the settings that's probably yeah. like the permissions yeah i had that issue with my laptop i only physically have one camera on the ca on my laptop but i have five cameras total because i've hooked up different configurations for work and whatnot so i'll but, switch over to my phone uh, but i do see a, a message here that says video isn't working which i already knew that part <laughs> so okay um, okay. I'll be back. <laughs> so do we want to wait 
Please oh, no, you guys keep going. It's totally fine. I'll listen, and then I'll just rejoin on gotcha. my phone. All right, so am I leading this, the Art Commission leadership vote for a new chair? Um, we had a nomination by Mr. Jeff Beasley. The last meeting, uh, Sky said that she would be interested in taking over the chair position. Is that correct, or did we... Did we uh... Willing, maybe. <laughs> I... I think I, I did agree to it. <laughs> I would I don't know if I volunteered, but <laughs> yes, I will do it in the interim. I've as you all know, I've done it before, so yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> so how do we do that, Kelsey, in a sense of just So can we signing? have just to make this Clean. Can we have a motion to nominate Sky for the chair position and then a second and then we'll vote? And I know that we started that last time, but I just kind of like to start clean again. And just for Winnie and Rachel to know, we started this process last month, but Sky had to leave early that time and it just it didn't come to a vote with her um, in the actual meeting. So that's why we're continuing that this month. Yeah, she had like an anniversary or something she had to do. I don't know. Something. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, okay. does someone want to um, make the make the motion? I nominate Sky Bowie for chair. Okay. I will second. Perfect. And then I think you'll need to call now, for Now, I'll call for a vote to nominate Sky. As our new chair, say aye. 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 Do I vote? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You're a member. Yeah. I can't vote. Did you say anything there, Rachel? I said aye. Okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't see if your button bounced or not there. There we go. Any opposed? Seeing none. Congratulations, Sky. You're our chair again. Fearless leader. There we go. Thanks. It's a revolving chair. <laughs> and thank you, Sky. Of course. And thank so, you, John, for doing this. No problem. Well, thanks for having the confidence in me. And I know we're going to miss Bernie a whole lot. He's been fantastic the last couple years. Um, but hopefully we can carry on seamlessly and keep going with all of our fantastic upcoming plans. So do I do I lead this thing or, do, well, or does John finish it out? What do we do? <laughs> Tag you right now. What? I suppose I can just say that we have an update on the Center for the Arts done uh, led by Shanda and then you have it from there. Uh, I guess we'll just talk about the friends. About the friends. Is that how we can do it, or do we? Is That's there a simmering I've period? I've typically seen it done. I've already seen yeah. it. That as soon as you're the chair, you're the chair. Yeah. Yep. Great. Congratulations. And, and you're, here you, you are. are it. Right. Yeah. All right. And from now on, uh, uh, we'll be doing we'll this every July. So, so we'll get we'll so get good at this. Um. Great. Great. So, uh, uh, oh, I can hear myself. Can you? Somebody's it? got their their phone or something on speakerphone, and it's probably hearing itself back. Oh, okay. I'm, so I'm going to mute everybody, and just if you want to talk, just unmute yourself. Okay. My end. Okay, so Shanda, you can unmute now. I'm all right. I'm unmuted. So um, Center for the Arts. Um, some kind of fun things are happening um, as we. And I know Sky just heard this, but as we are leaning into our role as a cultural center and city center, we are looking at all the things that we can do while we're not um, an event venue or a performance venue. So we're very excited right now. We just put all our fall art classes up online. Um, there's a community survey right now that is out on social media and we sent out to all of our patrons and participants, which I would love for all of you to take if you would. We're looking for community input as to um, what 
programs they're hoping the center will offer, what kinds of things um, resonate with our community members in this coming year. So um, that's really substantive information for us to know. So if you all would take that and share that, that'd be great. Um, we are starting some modified fall classes. We have a mix of online classes and small group instruction, in-person instruction. So following every safety parameter available under the OHA, we are doing some small group classes in our center. Thanks to that giant main room, you guys, that giant room where you can push the bleachers back and the lovely, you know, well-maintained HVAC and um, have a pretty safe area to have classes. So we'll be doing ceramic night, paint night, um, some parent and me type things, and then some online classes as well. We're not doing anything that is theater or singing oriented right now because of the aerosols and um, all of that fun stuff, but we will be having some creative outlets for folks. So we're looking forward to that. Um, the online classes worked really well in August when we tried them out, and um, we're going to continue that with little art pickup dates that people can come by the center and pick up art kits. So that's what's happening in arts education. Um, just a few hours ago, um, we rescheduled the fall art walk. I know Kelsey's very excited about that. Um, it was put together to go September 10th, but due to wildfires, we had to postpone it for air quality. But that is still happening. So September or uh, October 1st is happening. Um, we are also doing our official gallery opening on that night. And I encourage all of you to come to the gallery. We have a, an amazing gallery right now that um, you just need to make an appointment to come see it. And we'll make an appointment with you and you can come in with your family group or small group or even just by yourself and see our three paper artists. We have, it's called For the Love of Paper. And it's three artists who all work in the paper medium. And it's really beautiful work. Um, three very different approaches to using paper. And I think it's beautifully put together. It's all through our lobby and down the, the using every bit of our gallery space that we can, the amount of work that is in there right now. So I encourage you to come see that. That's my big center for the arts news. I have a question, Chanda. Um, is that opening on October 1st as well? Yes. So it okay. will be open that night. We'll have staff stationed at the doors, um, okay. making sure that not too many people are allowed in at a time. But it will be open that night as part of Art Walk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Sounds great. Thank you. Is it me now? I just want to make sure okay. I haven't done this for a while. So um, it's great to hear that there's stuff happening at the center and that you're going to be starting some classes again. And hopefully we can all make it to the rescheduled art walk. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It says, it just says unmute. It keeps saying unmuting. So I don't know. <sighs> it's a Monday. Um, any other uh, questions for Shanda about what's happening at the center right now? Um, I just thought of something, but do you, right now is the door usually locked to the center? So does somebody need an appointment to come in? Okay. The building is um, technically still closed to the public. Public, okay, good to know. I was curious about that. Okay, thank you for the update. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like I'm next on the agenda with the friends update. Um, I have a question and I'm sorry if I missed this at the beginning, are we going to be introducing our new members or did we already do that? We do that in other. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So for, uh, the friends update, we just got done with that meeting. Um, we, this is the first time we've met uh, in about a month and a half. We added a new member. Her name is Mary Reed, who I think some of you know. She's been a long time 
um, community uh, volunteer in Sherwood and has been on the parks board and uh, maybe another board. I can't remember, but we're excited to add another member. So that brings us to, oh boy, I'm going to have to do the math. Five or six, 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 six. yes. And we're still, we, we're still trying to add a few more members. I uh, would be really happy if we could do that. It's kind of hard to recruit right now, but we're still working on it. Um, and then the other big thing we're working on right now is since we can't have our annual gala like normal, um, we're not sure what that'll even look like going into 2021. We are working on an ask letter to send out to everybody who's attended our gala as well as other citizens uh, basically a donation letter um, so that we can continue to help support the friends. Um, and we're going to be focusing on our scholarship program and just some other, anything else that'll help the center. Uh, Shanda's going to help me write that. And we hope to send that out middle of October uh, so people can get it in on their, their tax returns. Oh, hi. We can see you. We can't hear you. Hey. Hey. There you are. Hi. So, on like three devices, but I found the one that's going to work. So, and now I see myself on the other big screen. That's interesting. That's interesting. Well, you made it. Yes. We're happy to see you. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then really, I think for the friends, that's our big um, thing right now. Um, Shanda, can you think of anything else since you were just at that meeting with me? Um, oh, oh, sorry about my hand. Um, I think the main, the only other thing I can think is that um, if anyone wants to take a, a recycling bottle drop bag. Well, said that. Them. Yes, thank you. You all are our trusted group here. We have plenty of bottle drop bags and that goes straight to our scholarship or to the scholarships that the friends offer for kids and seniors to take class at the center. So yeah. So we basically drop the bags off and um it, the money directly gets directly deposited into our account for fundraising and you can do cans, glass bottles, some plastic bottles. I think that's it. So if you'd like to have a place to collect your stuff and drop off and not have the headache of doing it, we've got you covered. <laughs> what? Okay, so that's basically it for the friends. Um, do we have citizen comment for tonight? Uh, I have a question. Um, if you don't mind, can you like a couple minutes tell me what the Friends of the Sherwood Arts Culture is all about? So yeah, great, more about great it. Question. <laughs> great question. We, the Friends of the Sherwood Center for the Arts, uh, it's basically the fundraising arm of the Center for the Arts. So we were created to support the Art Center. Um, with any types of needs, uh, but also we provide scholarships and grants. We provide scholarships for classes and camps for all ages at the center, which benefits the community and the center. And then we also provide grants um, for people that would like to put on productions at the center to help with some of the costs of that. Um, but it all has to be done at the center. So, we, so it helps kind of some smaller nonprofit theater groups or dance groups or just anybody wanting to put on a production. So we have been, I believe this is our, we're in our fifth year. Um, and every year our biggest fundraiser is we throw a gala. I don't know how long you've been in Sherwood, but um, it's the, it's the Sherwood Center for the Arts annual gala, and every year it's a different theme. Last year was a night at the Cop Copacabana, so it was like 1950s nightclub themed, and we raised the largest majority of our money 
at that event every year. So we like to think we're the best fundraiser in, in town. <laughs> I have a question for you, Sky. Yeah. But I figured where the unmute button was. I kept clicking oh. on my name thing and that wasn't working. Uh, what's the budget usual, the usual budget for that event? For the gala? Yes. Um, well, honestly, it has changed every year as we've earned more money. Last year, I believe it was about 15000 Wow. Um, yeah, a lot of it that I'm including donations received, though, so that's not cash. We try to get as many things donated as possible. Um I'd have to look back. I can get back to you on that on the next meeting, though. No, is that want. funds? Is that funds raised, or is that how much you spend? To, I was looking for your budget, like costs. Yeah, I, I'd need to double check. Um, we've been at work. We've been uh, crazy busy doing all these virtual events, and they range anywhere from thirty-five hundred up. Yeah. So I didn't know if that was a an option to look into doing a virtual event for the art center a virtual event is yeah so that is definitely something we've we've talked about um that if we can't if we can't do the event next year that's probably what we will look to but we had already decided to put our event on hold this year um while we were building the board anyways so no i think it it, it probably would be doable are you is that a that's the cost for what? That's to stream the event. Like you come in, like it, I can take photos of our three different studios that we have now um, that you can do an all virtual where you're in a one. It's basically one one person talking in front of a backdrop with visuals where and then the larger studios have a large screens behind you with lights and you can have two to three <laughs> presenters, presenters in the room at a time. And People have been pretty su successful. We just did mu music workshop last night. We're doing these on average seven to ten virtual events a week, and probably will be more next month per week. Wow! Yeah, that's great, and it's great to know that we have somebody who knows so much about it <laughs> that might be able to help us with that. Should we decide to? So I am. I just pulled up the. 2019 budget um i i can't i couldn't find the final but our projected costs were about let's see entertainment mm -mm -mm -mm. it was about twelve thousand dollars because so basically we, it really depends on the amount of people. The most expensive thing is the food and the entertainment. Um, so, so that's the thing with virtual that mm -hmm. gets cut back right. quite a bit because you don't have the food costs. Right. You don't have a lot of the overhead costs. And then sense of entertainment, you're, you're a bit limited. And then we can also, like we're doing Microsoft's teams here, we, we bring people in all the time via Zoom and uh, we have three professional grade uh, vmix systems which are basically zoom and microsoft teams on crack and it's amazing what they can do so yeah that's great well and that's awesome because if we did do it next spring um we would it sounds like everybody's working the kinks out for us so oh, yeah. <laughs> it would be something that was well done so no that's great to that's great to know i might need to pick your brain on that yeah we've done over we're almost to 60 uh since march awesome wow okay well good to know thank you okay so gotta sorry go back to my agenda here we are so, okay, here we are. We are to the citizen comment. Do we have any of those, Shanda? No. No? All right. No. Moving on. We've, we're on to our council update with Mr. Arland. Hey, hi. Uh, I'll keep it brief tonight because I know we've got uh, other things to discuss. 
Um, we're actually going to keep things pretty simple here over the next uh, month or so. We're looking at the uh, park and rec uh, master plan is kind of the big focus here coming up. We're going to do a review of it in a work session coming up in our next meeting, which is October 6th. Uh, and then it'll be on our agendas in uh, November and December. Um, other than that, you know, pretty typical boring stuff about uh, annexing some land into the Tonkin Employment Agency, so nothing that's going to draw a lot of viewers to YouTube, but we are still, um, everything is still online. All of our meetings, we most likely will be through the end of the year still. Um, no real urgency or, or desire to change that yet at this point, even though the, the governor has relaxed some of the um, requirements around that. Uh, I think the council is fairly fairly unanimous in keeping uh, to the status quo that we have here as far as um, keeping all the meetings online. So um, I guess, uh, let's see, October 13th is the registration deadline for the upcoming election. So if you haven't uh, registered to vote yet, go to the Secretary of State website. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions here recently, a couple people being um, concerned about the ballot box behind City Hall and Library. Washington County has removed that for some maintenance and repainting. They have assured us that it will be back uh, in time for the ballots. Uh, the ballots actually go out into the mail on October 14th, so uh, we'll be back in plenty of time for us to uh, be able to drop off our ballots, which I would recommend everybody do early. Um, I think starting in our primary that we had earlier in the year, um, there was a new government uh, or a new measure that passed uh, in a recent special session earlier in the year. Uh, you may be aware of that there's no postage required on uh, ballots to return those any longer. You used to have to put a stamp on them. Now they're, that's completely free if you want to mail it in, although giving it everything that's going on with the post office, I'd still probably recommend dropping it off uh, in the ballot box if you if have the um, capability to do that. Um, I think that's it. I don't uh, have a lot of exciting stuff to report. So I'll, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Unless you have any questions. Thanks, Sean. I did not know that. I about do. Yeah, I do want to say one thing. Uh, Shanda did also uh, participate in the Rotary Peace Walk this oh. weekend and had some lovely things to say about the Center for the Arts and the Peace Poll there and gave some history on on that and uh, was well received. It was the the final stop on the Peace Walk. And I think they obviously saved the best for last because uh, Shanda did great in, in speaking well of, of the arts in Sherwood and how it, you know, brings uh, brings a good sense of community to uh, to Sherwood. So I just wanted to call out Shanda and say, great job. Oh, nice job, Shanda. Way to represent. Thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thanks for the update, Sean. Uh, sounds good. Good to know. I did see some buzz about those ballot boxes, so thank you for clearing that up. Of course. Okay, if there's no questions for Sean, then let's go ahead and move on to our public art and murals plan discussion. Back to Shanda. I think, are you muted? All right. The giant okay. hand was unmuted. Thank you. Um, so first, I I want to say um, I appreciate all of you. Rachel and Winnie, I appreciate you jumping in. This is an exciting time to jump on board. But um, John, Jeff, Sky, um, appreciate you sticking with this plan. This is, as you know, this has been a long time in the works. And we've had a lot of um, a lot of spurts and stops and starts and stops. And I feel like um, there's a lot of lessons that have been learned by me personally over the last few years of this process. And um, I appreciate your continued patience and belief in um, the getting done of this plan. And um, I want to shout out to Kelsey right now. Um, so the idea was never that um, Kelsey would have to lay out the whole thing, <laughs> but she has and has done it. And it looks, um, I think it looks beautiful and professional 
and it looks as if we paid twelve thousand dollars to have someone lay it out so um i want to say thank you to kelsey um for also taking edits that sometimes are sometimes i send her just a ton of crazy edits and she is able to read them and decipher what i'm talking about and put those into play and so thank you kelsey um i would love to um talk about the murals plan a little bit because that's what you all got with a few days notice the public, the public, art, the public art master plan is also in your inbox now but i realize that you did not get that in time to really spend substantive time on that so um i recognize that um i would love to hear your thoughts on the murals plan you had a chance to look at it knowing that the murals plan is um the reason why it's um a standalone document right now is that it's the most actionable piece of public art that we can do um it's something that is less expensive it's something that is very um cost effective and when it's something really actionable that we could have if we're approached by any small business or any citizen group to just say, oh, you want to do a mural, here's the exact process for doing that. So they, they are made to go hand in hand. They're made to be part of the same whole. But the murals plan is something that could easily be handed to someone who wants to make a mural right away. Does that make sense? So I would love to hear... Um, comments or feedback on the murals plan a little background on the murals plan it has been um, modeled on regional arts and culture council's plan which is you know the standard bearer for murals in oregon um, and then we specifically worked with hillsboro and beaverton to model our plan on their very successful murals plans um, the the murals plan um, has also undergone scrutiny from our um, our uh, losing the word our planning folks at the city of Sherwood to make sure our language is in um, is in keeping with the sign codes and with um, any city codes that might apply. Um, and that's a little bit of background there. But I would love to open it up for a comment on the murals plan specifically. Kelsey, did you, Kelsey, did you say that the, the it would be in the chat notes or the meeting notes? Um, yeah. So if you move your cursor a little bit, you can see a, um, there's a hand and then a little talking box. You want to click on that talking box, and then you'll see. Um, if you scroll up towards the top, I put a link that has where all of the agenda and then the murals plan and the public art master plan. I don't see the link. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not seeing it in there. You're not? Okay, hold on. Not not in the chat. That's where it should be, right? I saw it when I first logged in and yeah. I, I clicked on it. Hold on, I'll do it again. Maybe it's because more people entered the room. There okay. it is. Let off my email from yeah. earlier. There you go. Yep, it's there now. Thank you. You're welcome. I do have one question about the language. And Shanda, you mentioned that it went through multiple different uh, people. And I do overall like it. The There's one sentence that I felt could maybe have been worded differently. Um, and it just kind of struck me in a weird way. So it says the Cultural Arts Commission encourages artists of all ages and races to apply. Um, and of course, absolutely, diversity, uh, we love that. I just felt like that could have been worded differently. Um, yeah, that resonates. I know I should, 
have come with a suggestion for how it could have been worded differently, but I honestly didn't have time when I was reading it earlier. Um, I think there's more, there's, I think there's some better language to express the fact that we're wanting a wide range of folks to apply. So, yeah. That was really the only thing that kind of struck me as I would like to see worded differently. I haven't, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm, go ahead. Um, I haven't looked at it at all because I just saw it in the link in the chat, but is it for kids too? Or, I mean, do we want like a lot of kids applying to it? I guess I'm just curious if we're going to say all ages. I don't know. Like, I'm yeah. not sure what the end result we want. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that is, um, I think the the spirit of a statement like that is to say, you know, encouraging people from all ethnic backgrounds and um, traditions and um, age and groups. I think experience okay. levels too, yeah. like emerging artists as well as people who've been in the field for 40 years. We want to make sure all feel welcome to apply. Um, so I, I think there's a more graceful way to say that. Um, and kind of update that language. It's, yeah, but it's not for kids to, to raise yeah. those questions. It's not necessarily <laughs> for kids. So I think that's more experience levels, making sure that, um, yeah, emerging artists and veteran artists apply. Not to say that they couldn't be involved, right? There was, um, yeah. I remember one of the plans that Maggie presented to us way back when, that the artists took in about a bunch of artwork from children and then made that part of an art project that was a yeah. public art project plan there are some great projects where yeah kids art gets turned into wraps for manhole covers and not wraps but painting for uh, manhole covers and wraps for electrical boxes and all kinds of things yeah definitely ways to include students and children um that's helpful that is a helpful comment, Sky. Any other language stick out as particularly um, either stale or dry or outdated or doesn't feel like it applies to Sherwood? Any areas of concern that stick that's out? Or The only the only thing is having something readily available for the. I understand that um, when you put something on a building, even maintaining your home, there's maintenance that needs to be done. But having a, a definition for someone that would be interested in putting it on, say, their business building or their or their home, if it would be appropriate to do that, that's along a public route. What that what that entails. Like to kind of give them a, a spectrum of an average cost to maintain a mural. I tried pretty hard the last couple of days trying to find that information and I wasn't successful. The average cost to keep a mural, like upkeep yeah. of a mural. Um, I did have a great, um, some great feedback from Kristen earlier about maintenance and language around maintenance that, um, I'm going to put something that is more specific as to what is expected, like, like you know, repair. No repair. If anything, if anything gets, gets damaged, damaged or graffiti, or graffiti, or, uh, uh, making sure the right of way to, um, uh, or not the right of way, the access points for the public to view the mural are kept in good repair as well. So we'll add that kind of language. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure that there is a an average cost for for that. Um, is it really depends on the surface and the materials that it's on and the weather and is that more to be helpful for the person? I, it's for them to make it? a decision, you know, and it's, it's like, okay, I, I want to take this on, but what what am I getting myself into okay. as a business owner or a homeowner that happens to have a large visible wall that that would work on 
just so that it's it's known ahead of time. Okay. And that makes me think, and maybe it's in here. What if there is an issue with the mural? Is there a recourse or a process to make sure that it's fixed or, you know, I guess that kind of goes along with maintenance. So like a, like a structural or a. Yeah. Something wrong with the mural. Right. So, or it gets damaged somehow or, you know, there's some problem. How do we go about having the artist fix that? So for, um, for this mural process, it says the onus of that is on the, um, the property owner. The property owner. Okay. So, um, something that is, is helpful to property owners is knowing the technology that exists with the, um, the kind of UV coating and the anti-graffiti coating. They're more robust than they were a few years ago. And the, um, the methods they use to protect artwork is certainly stronger than it used to be. So um, there's a lot of technical specs there, making sure they use the correct um, the correct coating and it's applied under the right circumstances. But if something actually damaged the artwork itself, it would be up to the um, the property owner to repair that. Okay. Um, there are some clauses in other cities where if there is a public art mural that's in, you know in a spot that is accessible and viewable by the public and the city sees that it's not being maintained. There are other cities that say we can we can take it down if it's not being um, maintained to a certain level, so it doesn't make our downtown look yeah crunchy or um, or just ill ill yeah. fitting. So we can. And that's kind of what I was thinking of with that because okay. what how can we have a little bit of control over that? To make sure that it's not detracting from the feel of our cute our downtown. Yeah, and I think that's the um, that seems to be the thrust behind the five year the the five year standard is that's generally a good time that you can keep a good mural or a mural looking at its best is that five year period, okay. and it also lasts long enough that it can become part of the town's identity. But if it's um, at the end of that five-year initial period, you can decide, hey, this is working here. We want to keep it here and keep the upkeep, or it's time to restore it to its original. So, Chan Chanda, I have a question. Um, are we looking for both for an artist and a location, or do we have a location and we're just looking for an artist? So this plan is... Um, is for anyone who anyone wants, wants to put a piece of art on the side of their building or wants to um, put a mural in their neighborhood. So this is the process that they would start with. And then um, we as the, or you, not we, but you as the Cultural Arts Commission would go over the plans and make sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed to have a quality piece of mural art in that neighborhood um, that it's done by a professional artist that it's put up according to the high standards of um, you know a mural that's going to withstand weather and wear and tear Tear. so the question we talked about that um, after the five-year mark mm -hmm. is there if it becomes an iconic piece of the town is it still on the property owner to then at that point update it or is it something that the art commission or the city would potentially try to assist in renewing mm -hmm. the mural? So there are a lot of ways different cities, different municipalities deal with that. Um, some, I, it feels like for a community of Sherwood size that it's going to be a conversation with other human beings who um, uh, who put up the mural in the first place. But I know there are clauses in a lot of um, public art plans that say 
you know, after X amount of days, after the five year period is up, um, you can decide X or Y and it can go either way. It seems like for most smaller town public art plans, it's a conversation of um, is it working for the is it working for the host of the mural? Is it not working? Are the costs becoming prohibitive? If they are, but it's beloved to the city, can the city step in and take it over? Like, those are the conversations that would take place with a city of our size. And even actually with a city of Portland size, those are conversations that happen around murals that are supposed to be temporary, but then maybe um, become a become a beloved landmark and how to keep those going. So we could, I mean, we could, I guess we could spell it out in greater detail or we could um, note that it's important to have those conversations, especially as you reach the five year mark. Yeah, I, I think just in the sense of all those things, even the, the thing I mentioned about cost or estimated costs based on size and all that, maybe just having that available or at the ready and probably mm -hmm. us just doing the legwork to kind of have it if and when that were to happen, we're just ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, and I, to your point, John, um, it is it is going to be important to have those conversations because right now we're not we're not offering a funding model or grants right now. We're just saying here's a way to put public art up, and we're the um, we're hoping to guide the conversation towards high quality, um, impactful art, but we don't get to pick the artist we don't get to pick what the mural looks like we just have the standards and we're here to come alongside business owners or neighbor neighborhood groups, groups and yeah. help them make the best product possible so yeah those would, any other questions that would be helpful um to have at the ready um i had another one about the mural selection criteria and uh, you said it. you partnered with Hillsborough and Beaverton to, yeah. to write this, which is great because I know they have amazing programs. So I'm assuming they've thought of most everything. But just looking at the selection criteria, I know this gets to be kind of a, um, a tricky area. But yeah. if there's something that is highly controversial or, you know, is that what something that might upset people to see is there which one of those criteria covers that sort of thing yeah so um and i know we touched briefly on this back in i think february um yeah so I, just yeah <laughs> we're, we're renewing our brain sorry i'm shifting to a different location um so Hillsborough is completely revamping their murals program because of um, the realization that um, First Amendment freedom of speech rights um, trump a lot of the criteria that they were using. So they've pulled way back on theme and now it's basically they rubber stamp it whether it, it either fits city code or it doesn't fit city code. So, um, but that's for art that is driven by community members or a business. For Hillsborough city funded art through the Hillsborough Arts and Culture Council, they have robust internal discussions and um, as a body, pick the artist, pick the theme, pick the city owned property and go for it. So um, it's two different, mm -hmm. two different things depending on who's driving it and who's paying for it so um in our murals plan with sherwood the one area that might address that is in the little list i forget which page it is 
um, but there's but one that, that says the steps. And there is a, a portion that I think is important for a town of our size is to always have a citizen comment um, portion for the affected people. So if it's, yes. you know, downtown historic Main Street, allow citizen comment perhaps at a Main Street meeting. If it's at a neighborhood, have a neighborhood association meeting or a neighborhood um, comment time. So making sure that there is time to get that public comment for whoever will be affected. Um, I you know don't see that where that is. Okay. I'm sure it's there somewhere, but <laughs> it's not required though. I know there are some public art plans where it is required to have a notified um, citizen comment time that is noticed just like any other um, public meeting. So we could make that more um, more uh, robust, I guess, as a, as a clause moving forward. Um, it's point number four, just an FYI. Sky, uh, Sky was saying that she couldn't see it, so it's point number four. Thank you, Winnie. Oh, I see. If applicable, a meeting notice is sent to the neighborhood. So when will it be applicable? So I think the idea with that was if it's going to affect a neighborhood. Like if it's going up on a wall that is in a neighborhood, then that would be applicable. Okay. If it's going up in a corn Or field, business owners. Not it sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just if it's going to affect other people every day. Um, you know, and part of, as we've talked about in this group before, um, you know, even the most innocuous art project is not going to please everybody. Of course. So it's always a risk, <laughs> you know, um, the murals plan lays out ways for people to, you know, put in a rendering of what they're hoping to put up um, show us the colors they're hoping to use, show us the medium, but there is a risk. You can have half the people love it and half the people not, and such is the nature of art. Um, but, yep. Uh, That's, I just, you know, it's just good for in the rare, obviously we can't be the judge and jury on what is art, but if something is really not good for our community, it's it's nice to know that we have recourse. We have, you know, that in written in there. Um, yeah, just thinking ahead. And al yeah. also, what if the artist, which I'm sure doesn't happen, but put something up that wasn't what was agreed upon? Yeah, so do we do um, that? they can't do that. Um, and we could strengthen that language. I have seen art plans where um, someone from the Cultural Arts Commission or their their equivalent um, goes and checks. And within the first three days, if they notice even different colors are being used than the rendering or it's looking different than what we approve, they can put a stop to it right away. Um, so I, I think, you know, aesthetics are really important to Sherwood. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be new, so it's going to change a wall somewhere that someone yeah. is very comfortable driving past that wall as it is. Um, so I think it's important that we are able to speak to, um, you know, the nature of art, the, the process it goes through, and um, it's also an education point for our community, too. Like, how do we look at public art? How do we talk about public art? Why? Why is this on the side of a building and not inside um, a gallery? So we're all going to need to keep keep up with our fluency and how to talk about that as well, because the Cultural Arts Commission will be the ambassadors to the community um, talking about it. Um, I know for some people, and we, we met some of these people during Bill Flood's um, comment time, and for Winnie and Rachel, Bill Flood was a consultant who came in and helped um, get public comment for the validity of a public art plan in Sherwood a couple of years ago. Um, but, you know, there are people who 
you say the word arch and it's an immediate uh, an immediate visceral reaction of I, I'm already offended by that and I'm not quite sure why. So, you know, that's part of it too. It's not a um it's not an exact science, but um I know there was a beautiful project over at the Sayusla River Bridge on the coast and someone who works for um, our planning department is from that community and um, shared with me about that process and it's a gorgeous piece of art. I've driven past it. It's dynamic. It's eye-catching and it really means a lot to people in that community. There are people in that community who hated it and who hate it to this day. Um, but you know, that's what art does sometimes. Um, one thing in that community that we need to learn about for our community is, um, they did hold public meetings, but the word was not spread, um, in a very effective way. So, um, a lot of the controversy came after it was already approved and in the process. So we would just need to make sure that when we say we're going to, have a public meeting we get the word out and um, make sure everyone feels heard to the best of our ability yeah um do we feel that we need to strengthen language, language in those, in those areas? areas i would like to just to make sure that we have the ability if any problems were to come up i I don't think that that is our biggest concern or has been as a commission, but just in the times we're living in, I just feel like we should be prepared for anything. So if it's, and I don't think it would take a lot, but just a few little things here and there. So strength and language in the, um, around public comment and keep talking. Yeah, I mean, I think that that maybe would be smart. I don't know the best way. Um, if we did allow public comment so that if there's something extremely objectionable, we could hear about it and then take it into consideration. Uh, I don't think it necessarily needs to be, I don't know, well, maybe it does a mandatory where you send it out, like when you're doing a, a plan development or something like that, but um, something to give people an opportunity in the near vicinity, I think would be smart. Well, I think we can hear people's arguments and just like they might not agree with the artwork, we might not agree with their argument, so. Right. We don't have to act on what they're saying necessarily, yeah. but yeah. we should hear it. Yeah, just the hear concern is good. Yeah. I think there's just an avenue, there needs to be an avenue to give people an opportunity to, to voice their opinions and also to me that's always an educational moment to talk about like it's not it's different than painting an exterior right like art is supposed to say something um and uh if you've shown up to a meeting you probably have strong feelings about it so let's figure out what to do with those strong feelings um how to use those in an effective way i know there are times when and this has happened a lot, not even content related, but a group will have chosen an artist and the artist does a rendering and they bring it to the group and the group is not 100% happy with it and asks the artist to re redo a render and they, they will do that sometimes. Like if you have a public artist who is skilled in this kind of work, they're also skilled in working with a group or working with a business um, and they want to make it work for everybody yeah mm -hmm. that's 
Any other thoughts on that? Those are really helpful. Or any so the purpose of the document is to be able to hand to someone like, uh, and I, I almost said the name of a business, but I don't even want to say a name of a business because uh, I'm going to make up a name. To hand it to Joe's Shoes, and Joe's Shoes wants to make a mural on the side of their historic building. Like, that's the purpose of this document, to give them um, steps and give them an understanding of what they're getting into and to not scare them away, <laughs> but make it a clear commitment um, that it's, it's not just a, um, you can't just throw paint up on your building on a whim. There is a process, but it's not a scary process. Yeah. Does this document fit that um, criteria? Okay. I believe so. Okay. Jeff, did you have anything to add? I see you in the corner. I'm just nodding my head that yes, I think it, it fits those categories and with uh, and I agree with Sky's uh, concerns, uh, and I would I would support a little bit stronger language as well. But otherwise, it looks really good. And I might say also the the uh, I did have a chance to look at the public art plan, and it also looks beautiful. So. All right. So my takeaways from that are um, um, have some real concrete internal answers for folks who are asking how much is this going to cost me to actually maintain a mural and strengthen some language around what the maintenance expectations are for the small business. And, yeah. and then the third thing is strengthen language around um, the public comment opportunities. Yeah. Like you said, not to scare them away. It's not, it doesn't have to be a part of the document. It just, could be on standby if they were to ask about it. Yeah. Yeah. And it is important that the first step of that plan is to come have a conversation. Um, because I, I hope that many people do want to put something on their, on their building. Um, and we want to hear from those people. We want to know who's interested and all for all we know, two businesses right next door to each other are both interested and that would be a, a beautiful partnership. So yeah. it does need to start with a conversation and with some real information. Um, okay. Are all hearts clear? clear. Uh, uh, public uh, art. Public art. Now now now. Does anyone not feel comfortable talking about it tonight, though, because you did just get it today? Okay. And that's and totally... That's totally um, um, I've read the past version. I haven't... I, I'm seeing a lot of new visuals in here. I don't know how much of the copy actually changed. So there's so. two pages in particular that we might that that deal more with the nitty gritty. Um, if I holler out some page numbers, are we able sure. to turn to those page numbers mm -hmm. in your hymnal? hymnal. Does everyone have access to it at this point? At this point. And That's I'll be honest, second. I haven't been able to look, I, I, just like John, I looked at the previous version. I haven't been able to even pull this one up yet until right now. So, I mean, it looks beautiful upon glancing at it, but I would love to really be able to digest yeah. it. I know we don't want to draw this process out any further. Yeah. Um, or if there, yeah, if you can point us to some major okay. change areas. And um, I want to publicly thank Kristen for being a wealth of knowledge um, just with some of this, um, some of the, the knitting language, language that we're, that we're looking, looking at. at. Um, so page.
page. Let me find this again. Let's see. Um, if we could look at page nine um, for a moment. Um, um, so page so nine page was important. Was important. So far as oh, I'm hearing myself yeah. echo. Is anyone not muted? Shanda, I think it's if you have if you have your phone going and your computer, if you have Teams going on both or Teams Maybe going, not. that okay. might be the problem. Okay. I will talk on. I just hear myself. Echo. Yeah, we can hear. I can hear the echo as well. Okay. I think everybody's muted now, so give it a go. Okay. Maybe that will help, yeah. Okay. I'll mute myself back. Okay, thanks, Kristen. Um, so page nine, um, the vision, mission, and values. It was important, as you know, for all of us to tie those to the, the stated mission and values of the city of Sherwood um, and to really show that the mission and values of the public art plan are in alignment with the city of Sherwood's stated values. Um, so I'm really happy how this page ties that all together. I did want to look with you on the values section on the right hand column of page nine. Those are values that um, you, the Cultural Arts Commission has stated over this process. And I wanted to just make sure those are still um, things that resonate with you as a body. So um, these values, uh, as it says, were carefully developed from public input. And this is taking all that public input that we've heard from Bill Flood's consultant work, and then um, you all as well, and this includes um, our past commissioners, um, but these are our value statements for public art that also applies to murals. It says, we value public art that brings people together, builds our collective identity, says who we are and what we value. We value public art that transforms our public spaces to be even more engaging and accessible. We value public art that honors diversity and raises consciousness. Uh, we value public art that connects people, ideas, and places. We value public art that responds to our history and the natural environment. Um, the next value is draws people to Sherwood and is good for our local economy. Demonstrates our friendliness, safety, small town feel, pride of place, support for youth, families, and one another. Uh, speaks to our collective humanity and responds to the surrounding environment. And I'm noticing one that kind of um, doubles. It sounds like we say responds to our natural environment a couple of times. But I would love to hear um, if those still resonate with everyone. I do not want to get into wordsmithing or group rewriting at this point, but just is this still resonant and are we able to champion these values as we go about speaking about public art in our community. I wasn't part of the building of that, but I think that all fits really well with Sherwood and um, the downtown feel and just, I don't know, the overall vibe. So I think it's great. I really like these, but it's not my, I want to make sure that they're all, um, they're resonating with you all. Sorry, I was talking on mute. 
Oh, you guys. I just said all sorts of things, and you guys missed it. Um, no, I just was saying, yes, I agree with that. I think it is good. Um, it, it represents kind of our community feel. I, I love it. Um, and I think you're right, Shanda, you can probably delete that one, the bottom line, since it's kind of a repeat. But um, you already knew that. So I think it's great. I think it feels good. And I think, I think that last bullet point was more about citing the art, like making mm -hmm. sure that art is well cited and mm -hmm. makes sense to be there. So um, I get it. Come up with a better. Um, reward it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it very eloquently says what we are going for. Okay. Great. Um, so I'm going to move along. If, if anyone has something else to add, this is a safe like, space. Yeah, I like what uh, Washington County cities don't have a public art program. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to draw our attention as we, I want to go to another page, but I want to draw your attention to the bottom of page 10. Um, that's a gorgeous quote from Bruce Coleman, who is our economic development manager for the city of Sherman, Sherwood. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to all meet Bruce, um, but he is a dynamo. I think we all want to be him when we grow up. And um, I really appreciate having something from from him in this plan. So uh, he put that quote together. He, we've had some really lovely conversations about um, the possibilities of public art and just revitalizing the gorgeous historic downtown cultural district that we already have. Um, and so that's kind of a great quote from Bruce. So if you see him, um, thank him as a member of the Cultural Arts Commission. Um, How long has he been our economic development manager? Just a year and a half. Is that okay. right, John? Yeah, I don't. I, I, I mean, it's it's maybe position. been a year and a half. Yeah, it, yeah. We brought him on kind of in a limited duration, and then said, "No, let's keep him around. He's awesome." Oh, great! I have not met him, so I was. I keep meeting him at well. Pre-COVID, I kept meeting him at a lot of nonprofit organizations. Like he was in there working the room. Oh, he seems to be everywhere on behalf of Sherwood. And, yes. Uh, really a champion of the small business community and um, loves what he does, which is such a gift. That's um, great. So let's see. So keep scrolling down. Um, so the assets and challenges on page 11 are drawn um, drawn from some of Bruce, or not Bruce's, some of Bill Flood's consultant work. And then I did um, put in a little bit on our assets. I, I wanted to put in a little bit about um, Washington County and our measured and measurable um, economic impact of the arts. And that's tied into the arts and economic um, prosperity study that was just done in Washington County that we um, participated in. So that's kind of um, uh, snugged in there. At the Where end are we that. again? I'm sorry. Uh, page 11 at the bottom of assets. Thank you. So just to make sure that we reiterate again that it's a it's a proven economic driver. Yeah, that is so important. So important. It yeah. is. And then the the challenges on the bottom of um, eleven are drawn from those um, community meetings as well. Um, which number three, three is getting public uh, public consensus around key public art related issues in Sherwood, which is basically, you know, how do you get everyone to agree um, <laughs> on what art is valuable? And we know that we won't. But again, that's that's part of growing as a community is to have those important discussions and um, to have art as a part of those those important discussions. So page, um, if you can scroll to page 13, 
or 12, sorry. The road not to success. This has been um, a page with a lot of uh, uh, thought that has gone into it, and a lot of um, it's a lot of words on it. But the the biggest change that you might notice, as you've seen earlier iterations of this, is that instead of writing goal one, goal two, goal three, we've changed it to year one, year two, year three. And then I did put a little year four and four on there at the bottom, um, to kind of make it more um, actionable, I guess, and more, this is what we can, this is what we're aiming to accomplish in the first year. Here's what we're aiming to accomplish in the second year. And then giving a vision of what um, that could look like beyond. So that is a lot to digest on page 12. But if, um, if you want to go in depth and really um, sink your teeth into a page, I would love for you to do that on page 12. And um, any feedback on that would be helpful. You and the main that. things on that are to, um, you know, to address the concern of um, how are we going to fund this, um, and hopefully that is addressed um, in many ways. The reality is there are a lot of ways to fund public art, and um, it's being done successfully um, all over the world. And so we're not reinventing the wheel, but we do need to make it clear that we um, are thinking about it and it's a reality and we have some, um, some ways to achieve what we're looking for. So I would ask that, um, that you would spend some time looking at page 12, I guess, yeah. and if you have some um, comments or concerns, if you could um, get those to me, um, I'd appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, and then page uh, 13 has yeah. responsibilities, responsibilities of the um, cultural the arts. Cultural arts. arts. As related, as related to the public art plan. Um, I did want to just go over those really quickly because it um, involves all of you. So um, the responsibilities down on the on page 13 um, are things that we've we've talked about often, but I want to make sure that those still resonate with you all as well. Um, so this is identifying immediate opportunities to leverage public art in public and private projects. Um, so basically being opportunistic to use Bill Flood's word about ways that public art could plug into our town. Um, building key partnerships that will help further implement this plan. So, you know, talking to our local businesses and neighborhoods um, advocating for public art and building support for it, laying a strong foundation for the future. That's all of us um, being able to talk about it to our to our friends and neighbors and constituents um, and talk about why it's important. And then identifying and helping to develop funding mechanisms for public art. Um, there is a resource list in Appendix A that has um, a, a bunch of resources to start. That's not saying that the Cultural Arts Commission needs to necessarily do the fundraising or write the grants. It's just helping to identify those opportunities when they come up. Um, and we'll talk more about fund development in a bit. Um, and then collaborating with stakeholders and engaging authentically with the community. So that's, um, again, serving as um, ambassadors basically for the public art that will happen in Sherwood and um, making sure that we're also 
hearing what the community is saying, have our ear to the ground in our various circles and make sure that the art projects that we're pursuing actually do reflect what's going on in the community. Um, basically not being in a public art bubble, but being of the community and able to um, identify where we can plug in and where it would make sense to pursue it. Do those make sense, y'all, the responsibilities, green box? Does resonate with everyone? Yes. I'll say to the, the imagery chosen for this document is superb and this is, I can visualize artwork like this in certain places around Sherwood. Great. Kelsey found a lot of those. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, I do love the images. I really do think that sometimes, you know, a picture can say a thousand words. I'm not the first to say that. Um, but there are <laughs> all kinds of possibilities with what can what can be public art. Um, yeah, no, visualization is so important. So I second what John said. Yes. That's absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see. So then page um page 14, I wanted to look at the bottom again in that green text box. Um so I know we had talked about a fund development committee briefly in February and January. And uh, the idea with the fund development committee is that it would be made up of a few arts commissioners who may volunteer to do that. And then representatives from the business community and interested citizens. And this is a committee that is, um, that is laser focused on public art funding. Um, so I don't know Sean is gone, but Kristen's still here. I keep hearing word that PGE is moving in. Are they moving into Sherwood or are they moving into into Tualatin? Like a like a headquarters almost. So they're moving a uh, headquarters um, on Tualatin Sherwood, and I believe it's, I remember it was just over the line into Tualatin, but in Sherwood, they're doing a new training facility. Okay. So that's more about, um, it's over there. Oh. Yeah, across the street from the new, like, the spaghetti factory. And yeah, 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 yeah. So the fund development committee is is just something I want to put on your radar as something that um, is hoped to be de developed in year two, that we have um, a small group of dedicated citizens who are excited about that. Um, we want to dive into the um, into the nitty gritty of how to do a percent for art or an SBC or whatever um, other mechanisms there might be. But that's specifically for um, that funding source for public art. Does anyone have any um, concerns about that or questions about that? Or does that need more clarity? So those are the, <laughs> those are some of the highlights of it. Um, I. I appreciate the fact that um, that you haven't had a chance to read it in depth and look it over. Um, I appreciate the fact that this has been a long um, a long process full of um, fits and starts, and um, I want us to feel like we have a light at the end of the tunnel and that this plan may be at the point that we could um, actually put it in front of city council and um, and get it approved. Did I, did I miss you saying that there's a reason why Appendix A isn't at the bottom? I think we're just, we, we got rid of some appendixes and baked them into the. We yeah, I just read we some. Reference. an appendectomy, John. Um, we 
put some of the appendices into the yeah. body of the thing. So we still haven't updated. Gotcha. Yeah, I was just reading feedback. through the responsibilities included and it's see Appendix A and I scrolled down. I'm like. Yeah, so that's what is showing up as Appendix B needs to be Appendix A. Um, or maybe the other way around. It's, it says Appendix A. Sorry, well, it, it's, it's supposed to be thing. Appendix A. I didn't go back and re-letter them when we got rid of some. No, so. no worries. <laughs> so Appendix B It'll will be match. Appendix A. So being aware of the time and that it's uh, Monday night and just a lot of verbiage, um, I would love uh, if you do have a chance to look this over this week um, and send me comment. Um, again, we're trying to keep out of the out of the weeds and not get uh, bogged down in details and words as much as possible because we do need to move this puppy forward. Um, but if there is something policy-wise or um, plan-wise that just doesn't make sense and doesn't read to you, um, I really want to hear that. Um, I want to reiterate that this is, and it does say it in the document, that this is a living, breathing document, that this is going to change and it will be the cultural arts commission every year that will um will review this on an annual basis at least and make sure that it still fits the needs of sherwood and the realities of sherwood um wherever wherever the future takes us i guess and the idea is that the policies um get fleshed out the program in the same way that the murals plan is fleshed out. So things like the acquisition policy gets a whole fleshing out. Things like the inventory management and maintenance policy gets a whole fleshing out. Um, the murals policy is something that we can flesh out right now. Again, it's actionable. We can do it. Um, we've got great templates to work within. Um, but that's that's the hope is that eventually we'll get way into the weeds with all of these policies, but we want to have something that we can move forward with, um, with more immediacy. Can you give oh. us a date for when, when you would like our comments by? Sure. Um, I, let's see, today is the 21st is Friday. Uh, a, a feasible timeline. Can we? Yeah. <laughs> no. What is a feasible about, time? You all have Monday? your own busy lives. Monday. What about Monday? We're not going to do anything on it over the weekend, so. Yeah. Great. I would love that. That way, I can actually look at it on a plane. And does anybody, this is, you know, many pages of full color. And I want to reiterate, I am happy to, I'm happy to drop off a hard copy at your house tomorrow. I will be driving around Sherwood. Would any, would that be helpful? Off copies of the art. I mean, right. I, I do what I do better with paper in my hand that I can. Well, it's mark. easier to make notes on it for sure. Yeah, like I, I can do it in Adobe, but it's not the same. I'm already going to John's house, so does anyone else want a paper copy? Do you like to get a paper copy marked back up, or would you rather us uh, send it to you back with comments on a Google Doc? What's easier for you to come through? Um, either way, I know that people okay. have different ways of working, and sometimes the electronic version does not work as well for people who want to send comments back sometimes it works brilliantly so okay knowing that each of you may have a different style i will take whatever style works best for you if you could drop off a paper copy that would be great mm -hmm. yeah it's funny i usually live in a digital world here but in the sense of really 
like you said, nitty gritty. Sometimes yeah. it's a lot easier having that physical copy. Sometimes I find that I'm on the computer a lot too lately, yeah. and sometimes it's nice to um, not be on the computer. Frankly, yeah, that's exactly time. what my thinking was, and then I can not need a connection and et cetera, et cetera. So thank you. Yeah, anyone else need one before? Um... I'm okay with the uh, digital. Okay. All right. Thank you um, for your eyes on this. And um, I'm really looking forward to the finish line with this. And of course, the finish line for this means the starting line for right. public art. So um, it feels like we're very close, Shanda. It really does. And um, thank you so much for all your work and continuing to have energy on this. Um, it really does look amazing. I think it's just, we're so close. We're almost to the finish line. So feeling good. I know we're all kind of getting tired <laughs> tonight, but yes. Um, are we ready to move on? So I noticed yeah. we don't have another section. Um, but, and thank you again. Um, but I think it's important that we do introduce our new members and at least hear a little bit about them. Um, we're almost to the finish line, guys, but I would love to have you introduce yourself so we can quickly say hi and introduce ourselves. Um, and to not put you on the spot, I'll start and say, hi, I'm Sky, and I've lived in Sherwood since 2003, and I have uh, three girls, two are who are in college now. One I'm taking down to her freshman year on Friday. Um, my husband's a fire chief for Tualatin Valley, so we've been real busy the last so many weeks. But we love Sherwood. I love the art scene. Um, my daughter is a theater major. It's kind of how I got involved. But then I just fell in love with it and can't seem to leave. <laughs> so... That's a little bit about me. Who would like to go next? John, go for it. I was going to call people. <laughs> I think Winnie was trying to say something and she's oh, okay. muted. Oh, no. Winnie, are you muted? So I'm trying to unmute. There you are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I'll go next, if you don't mind. Don't um, I'm very new to Sherwood. It's been two years since we moved here. Um, so I'm making my way from East Coast, from Philadelphia to Michigan to Oregon, and hoping to now build, you know, make, keep, you know, have roots here in Oregon. Uh, Oregon was always on my bucket list to move and uh, and live here, and it's uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful state, and I'm enjoying myself. Um, I come, uh, so I'm finally retired from a 20-year corporate career. And now I want to get more involved in the community, in my family life. Um, I have a seven-year-old son, and we are expecting another. Um, I am only five more weeks, and I would have another one. <laughs> so, um, wow, congrats. Yes, yes, he's a corona baby, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> we'll need to get um, a tiny cultural art t-shirt. <laughs> little onesie that would be amazing yes so th that's about me and I'm more than happy to you know if you want to connect offline and know more about me I would love to know more about you guys learn from you guys um, and how I can really invest in this and contribute to make sure that I can make it successful to what you guys have already done so thank you for having me here yes well thank you so much Welcome again. <laughs> All right, who are we putting on the spot next? I'll go next. Okay, go for it. <laughs> okay, and um, I live in Sherwood, obviously, too, with uh, my family. We have three boys. Um, two are five, and one is one. And we've lived in Sherwood for about seven years. And I think... Um, like one of the things that draw, uh, draws drew us into Sherwood was just like 
the quaintness of downtown and um I remember like we were eating breakfast at Clancy's and we were like, I think this is where we should move. And um, so I don't know, there's just something like really special about Sherwood us. And um, I teach here to first grade. Well, right now I teach from our bedroom, but really <laughs> sometime it will be first grade classroom, hopefully. Oh, bless um, you. What school? Um, what school? Um at ridges but i was actually um assigned to do online for the year so i guess actually regardless i'll be in my bedroom for the year <laughs> but, um, so anyways i'm happy and excited to be a part of this group and uh i've heard some wonderful things our neighbor is really involved in city council and he said that's the group you want to be on so um so anyway oh fantastic <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Looking forward to getting to know both of you um, more and hopefully someday soon in person. <laughs> um, uh, Jeff, how about you? Next. Okay. Um, I'm Jeff Beasley. I've lived in Sherwood for 40 years. And uh, I live on the edge of Sherwood, actually outside of Sherwood. I have a big garden about five acres and uh i've been on the board for about what three four years i don't i can't remember but um have enjoyed very much getting to know more about this little town that i've lived next to for so long i've always kind of considered myself a portlander instead of a sherwood person but um i'm i rarely go into portland anymore i'm pretty much centered in sherwood now so and I'll probably be on the board just one more year, but I'm gonna enjoy working with the new people and hopefully we'll get some more people to join before I leave. Thank you, Jeff. And Jeff has a gorgeous garden called Bella Madrona. He's, he's, he's not talking it up enough. It's famous <laughs> and it's beautiful and you can look it up. It's absolutely it's kind gorgeous. Of a big deal. Yes, kind of a big deal, so. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jeff. All right, John, you're it. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> I'm John. Uh, moved to Sherwood back in two, uh, 2012, uh, almost 2011, when we were working on our house. Um, my backdrop is actually what I'm looking at when it was actually lit. That's our living room looking out uh, north towards, um, I guess, Aloha or part of the other part of sh end of Sherwood. Um, I have two kids. My daughter just started uh, the new high school. My son just started the uh, new middle school, would be Sherwood Middle School. Um, background is I owned a uh, successful production company for 10 years, uh, sold that back in 2012 when we moved out to Sherwood. Please don't. And my son wants to interject as we're doing that always. Uh, but uh, I have a music background, a history background, and I really enjoy uh, the arts. I remember the first time driving, I, I used to head out to one of the properties we worked at was uh, doing audiovisual for, it was the Allison down in Newburgh, and I was passing through Sherwood and wondering what the heck this town was about. And then uh, when we finally decided to move out here, I, we started checking out the town and I came across the art center and I'm like, what is that? And I remember peeking in the windows and seeing, like, Does they have art in there. I need to get in this building. So um, <laughs> a love for the city um, almost immediately. Um, yeah. You do have a very beautiful view. Yeah. I was thinking it was a wallpaper or what's going on. It's gorgeous. Yeah, we, we had to do some, the, a lot of groups for virtual stuff. They wanted living room looks. So, um, I was working on doctoring up living rooms and I, this is a picture of our living room uh, amongst other living rooms that I had to do for different events. So it looks like people are presenting from their home. Awesome, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, Shanda, have, have you given an introduction when you yeah. met them? Please. But I did get the pleasure of meeting Winnie and Rachel a few weeks ago and I'm so appreciative 
of your um, jumping on board. It's an exciting time to come on board. And I also have been here at the Center for the Arts for two years, just like you, Winnie. Um, and I am thrilled with um, the fact that we have this city-owned art space right in the middle of town. And my goal is to have everybody do what John said, which is like put their faces against the wall and go, what is happening in there? There's art. Let me in. That's my, that's my goal. That's what everyone should be doing as they drive downtown. So um, yeah, I'm thrilled to be here and the cultural arts um, commission is very special to me because it was the first people that I met when um, I became the manager here. So I'm looking forward to a good year with all of you. Yay. Thank you so much. All right. Well, if we don't have any other, I think that about wraps it up for tonight. Are we good? Yeah. I'd love to say thank you to Mark for um, being IT person tonight. Thank you, Mark. Keep Is that the there. little MS that I see down yeah. there? Yes. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate and uh, Kristen and... Kelsey, who we can't see, <laughs> but thanks everybody for being here. Um, and it was really nice to meet our new members. Can't wait to get to know you better. Same here. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. See you next. Uh, next meeting is September or October nineteenth at six thirty. All right. We'll see you then. Perfect. Have a good night. Bye. Bye, everybody.